Hey, so this is Jason Morris with Real Estate Agents That Really Work. If you like these calls, we've been I've been posting on YouTube. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions, any comments, please put them below. That way, um, you know, I can see if I can help you. Maybe Steve can ch chime in and see if he can help you. And, um, of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, hey, so I'm on this call here with Stephen Hughes. We did our Z Buyer call a few days ago where Stephen is really doing well with Z Buyer, um, even though he just subscribed to it. But Stephen was telling me the other day, he talked about his for sale owner business. I thought it was really interesting. Of course, for sale owners on the rise and a lot of agents just don't know how to properly work those, those lead sources because to be honest with you, we hadn't really had them in the last few years. So Stephen, tell us what you're, what you're doing. Yeah, so um, a lot of people with FISBOs suggest a lot of different things. Um, I feel like I've tried just about any system. Like I've done a lot of previews, I've done direct mail, I've done dialers, um, but I, I kind of changed it a few months ago and um, I got away a little bit from FISBOs because I was focused on another part of my business, but just like you were saying, they're on the rise again. There's not as much competition um, and they take way longer to sell than they did say in 2021. So I guess I'll just talk about what my process is. So I go to one of yeah. two websites. Um, I go to either Facebook Marketplace or I go to, we have a thing called KSL here. That's basically the uh, Craigslist of, of the Rocky Mountain region. It's really big in Idaho and Utah. And that's where everyone posts their houses that they're selling by owner. So I'll send them an email through those websites. And a lot of times they'll respond. Well, I automatically take their number and their email and I add it to my um, really robust CRM campaign that sends them yeah. an email or text just about. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's back up just a little bit here. So that you send them an email through the website. What what does the email say? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. These websites, if they find out you're trying to solicit business, they'll block your account. It's happened to me a couple of times. Yeah. So I, they have like a form letter that's just like, hey, I'm interested in your house. So I just click that. I don't type anything. That way the website won't block me. And then if they respond, that's when I can engage them. And when they respond, they'll be like, you know, they say stuff like, oh, do you want to come see my house? Or are you an agent? Are you a buyer? It's all those questions. Um, it, depending on what they say is how I respond. And a lot of times I'll say something like, yeah, I'm an agent. Um, I think it's cool. You're selling your house on your own. Um, my big concern is where are you moving after this? Who's helping you buy the next place? Because, you know, that service, most of the time the seller will pay for, which We'll sometimes get a conversation, but you know, they get blown up so much. It's a really competitive lead source. Um, the biggest thing that helps me is adding them in the CRM because then they start getting all these texts and videos, and emails, and they get over to my YouTube and it's a bunch of like helpful stuff like, hey, here's some other websites you can join. Like you can post on bizber.com. Hey, if you're going to do an open house, read this brochure and make sure you keep the back door locked. Like it's stupid stuff like that. I, mean, I got a listing from it um, back in June of last year. And I tell this story because I think it's interesting. And it was a piece of land. And he hired me because he said, yeah, you're the only person that seems to know what they're doing on the Internet. So I actually think you could market it. It's what he told me. And uh, that piece of land is under contract now. And it closes here in about three weeks. And I, I didn't spend any money on it. I mean, it's like he had the pictures, the plat map, everything. You know, and I'll make several thousand dollars from it. And it was just from a silly email and CRM. So, like in my eye, even if I only did one FISBO a year, it was worth it because I I do this every day. It only takes me about five or ten minutes, and I'll call them really only if they respond to the emails or text. Yeah. You know, because I I honestly I'm just too busy to sit there and be on the dialer and call every single FISBO over and over again for three or four hours. I mean, I've got too many listings and other lead sources. Hey, so um, so I think that's pretty interesting. So you're basically sending them a basic email, which I done the same thing with Craigslist a few years ago. It'd be a basic email that just say, Hey, um, 
hey, I'm interested in more details of your house. Um, I'm interested in more details about your home. Uh, what's a good number to reach you at? It'd be something real, real simple like that along those lines. Yeah. And those things would get a response versus I see these agents, they send these like three damn page letters through emails or they do it through Craigslist. They've even done it on stuff I posted on Craigslist. And I go like, dude, nobody reads that, man. Just keep it real simple and real short. So basically you're sending that email. They're responding to it. And then if they send you a phone number, do you call them if they send you a phone number or do you just put them directly in your CRM? Um, you know, it depends on the day. <laughs> um, I should call them immediately. But man, again, sometimes their schedule's crazy. They immediately go on the CRM for sure. But um, I actually, it's funny. I have four FISBOs pulled up my CRM this morning because these are people who have literally looked at every video and email I've sent them. They've opened and yeah. clicked every single one. So I'm like, okay, they've got to know who I am by now. And they're interested in the stuff I'm sending them because it's not just like a canned, oh, you know, it's just not canned crap. Like I, I actually sat down and wrote out all this stuff or I took it from a couple of different coaching programs. And it's all stuff that actually does um, help their house show better. Or yeah, they're actually giving good advice. You know what I mean? Seth Godin, Seth Godin spoke at NAR. I believe it was NAR a few years ago. This you, this video is on YouTube and um where he talked about the evolution of real estate agents. And one of the things he said was that um, he said that we used to broker information. That was back in the day, dude, when I first started, they had the MLS books, right? right. So, if, so agents in the office would tear down listings out of the MLS books and that information just wasn't available in the book anymore, right? Um, but we were the brokers of information. We were basically the, the key holders to all the houses. Now we're not. I mean, we got Zillow. I mean, people can buy, search for homes without us, right? And he talked about how nowadays we broker trust. And it sounds like that is like a really good example of what he was talking about that with that. Seth Godin, this guy's marketing genius. I feel like he's always ahead of the curve, you know? And uh, it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing is you're sending out these little little tips and things to help them with their house. You're you're literally building trust with them, building a relationship. And then as you see them opening these emails and stuff, then you're picking up the phone and calling those four. And basically, hopefully by the time they've opened those emails and stuff, they're at the point where, you know what, man, dude, I'm getting calls, but you know, people don't realize this, man. It's hard to work a it's hard to work a nine to five job, have kids, family, all this stuff, stuff going on Saturday and have time to show and properly market and sell your home. I mean, and it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing with these people where you're building that trust. And hopefully when they get tired of trying to go out the mall and they contact you, but if not, after a little while, you're contacting them. So man, you put this whole for sale by owner system basically on autopilot. You just got to feed the top of the funnel. Yeah. And I mean, and that's what has made it um, easy for me because, man, again, it's it, it's one of those things like a, I um, and, I, and, and people might relate to this. It's one of those things I've struggled with because like when you're a new agent, you know, you don't know what you're doing and you're following everyone's advice. And then you just sound like anyone else when you talk to them. But then you start to change stuff. And over and over again, you just um, kind of learn stuff. And, and I'll tell you, I, I really feel an, that the initial cold call is powerful, but if you have a thriving business and I'm not bragging here, like saying I'm some awesome guy, but you're a what third year agent now, second, uh, year agent? second full year. He, no, I started in July of 2020. Um, okay. Yeah, I had passed my exam, but then COVID happened. So I had to wait like two or three months before they would activate it. And they activated it in, uh, in July of 2020. So, dude, what you're telling us, and I just want to make sure people listen to this call, you're not a 20-year veteran with a giant database. You were a, an agent that started, dude, agents probably don't believe this when I say this, but dude, the last few years has been a tough market for agents, you know? If you go in a restaurant for lunch and look around, look around the restaurant, probably every table's had somebody 
that was probably licensed in the last three years sitting at it, you know? So not only have you had tremendous competition, we've had a market that would sell homes by itself. You know, so you started in the toughest market that we've had in the last probably, dude, probably 15 years. Well, probably 16, 17 years during a time where we had COVID, where only God knows what was going to happen. And you were in your, you're in your, basically your second full year and you were closing a Pretty much, you're closing a deal a week, aren't you? This year? Uh, yeah, I have been I'm pretty close to it. Yeah, it, it. I really have been. It's not. Um, it has not been uh, that hard either, because I, I, I really do have systems. I understand the paperwork, and eventually, you get. Um, how how I say is, you, you just end up doing a lot of the same things, and it's almost automatic. You know it's what? Awesome. Tell us what what was your background, just for people that don't know who you are. Um, so I am formerly a school teacher and private teacher, um, but I have a master's degree in music. Um, I still perform some. I'm a drummer and percussionist, but before I was in real estate, I was a self employed musician. You know, I went and took gigs, and I would clinic um, as a 1099 employee at public schools and I taught like 30 plus private students did you know what I really like about your story is see I I had like an unfair advantage when I started and that unfair advantage was dude I was third generation in the real estate business I, I've never really talked about this a whole lot but my granddad and my great uncle built houses developed property my dad my dad was a contractor he developed stuff built stuff built hotels and apartments all over the Southeast. And then, so when I started the real estate business, I wasn't, I grew up around it. You know what I mean? I grew up yeah. around it. I grew up around real estate agents. I grew up around developments, sales offices with my dad. I mean, you know, gr growing up when I looked at people that really made money um, and I was trying to figure out what to do in college, dude, I, I literally looked at it. I was like, man, the only people that I know that made money was contractors, um, insurance agents, in real estate agents, right? Because I'd been around those my whole life and somehow or another I picked real estate, but I had a little bit of an advantage over a typical new agent. Um, you didn't have that real estate background advantage, but you did have something that was very unique is you being a musician, you had the ability to recognize patterns quickly. Yeah, and um, I'll tell you, I think the thing that really helped me is before, um, real estate in, with music i was on the, what they call the audition circuit um i was trying to win a military band job or an orchestra job and you have to pre prepare like half an hour of music but the list is always different for every audition but it's um it actually is a fair amount of work it's a lot of tremendous work. discipline yeah it's a lot of work and um i did win two jobs in the military but because um i had been in a car wreck when i was 19 my shoulder um was busted the military basically is like oh you can't serve because you have this 11 year old injury that actually isn't even a problem anymore but if they have really strict rules for some reason um, yeah that's a whole different conversation about you know I, i'm pretty sure right now they wouldn't care because they really need people but um, I'm kind of glad it didn't happen because if, if I had joined the military, then I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have my kid and I wouldn't have made the switch to real estate. Uh, I wouldn't be making sure. how I am. So, you know, it worked out for me. Oh, yeah. You know what, man? Um, I believe that sort of stuff happens. You know, if we have faith, we have faith. And then we have, um, you know, and you jump in the real estate business, you just had. I remember when we first talked a couple of years ago and you're brand new. Did you just, you took this, you took information I gave you, Barino, all these different real estate coaches, which I think that most of them were, were very, I think as far as coach wise, they were very much in line with systems and man, you just blindly followed and you just, you followed the process, right? You followed yeah. the process, you followed a proven process that got results and now as technology's changed and the industry's changed, man, you've taken advantage of that technology. And dude, you've created this own pilot 
automated four cell bar system. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. But um, I, I feel like I should say this because I don't know exactly who will listen to this. I don't want anyone to sit here and think like, oh, I just need to buy a CRM and just magically add a bunch of emails and I'm going to get listings. It's not exactly what I did um, because, you know, there's so many people who are looking for the easy button. Um, you're yeah, going to have to learn, yeah, you're gonna have to still learn sales skills. You're going to have to talk to these people at some point. And really, the thing that makes the CRM stuff powerful for me is um, there's a lot of video attached to it. So they, but that's me that sat in front of a camera and talked and edited video. So they kind of see me and that goes away. Um, and, you know, it's all meant to be, I call it the great fly trap. I mean, you take Mr. Fizbo, he responds to my email. I throw him in that CRM. I'm sending him text in emails. And then if he's looking at my stuff, I'm giving him a call. But if he goes to those videos on my YouTube, the YouTube algorithm is going to start showing him my face every day. Because guess what? I put a YouTube short up every day. So automatically, that's not even me paying for ads. Just because he went to my YouTube channel, all of a sudden YouTube's like, oh, you're interested in Stephen Hughes. So let's just keep throwing you stuff. And I mean, that, that has to have an impact on people. Where it's like, wow, I see this guy all the time. I know. Oh, of course. What it's off the line for sure. Yeah. So well, let's talk about this um, CRM follow-up. Like how many, how many follow-ups do you have in there? Like how many times are you reaching out to these people until like nothing happens again? Um, it depends on the lead source. Um, but we're talking about Fizbo's. Actually, I'm pulling it up right now because I want to make sure I quote it accurately. So I have um, 87 total campaign actions is what it says. Um, so basically, like day one, it sends them some stuff. Um, and then I'm just scrolling through it real quick. Um, it's like text and emails. I mean, every day they're getting a text and or email or both, you know. Oh, my gosh. I have one day where they get five things because that's I, I it's like day 18. I send them a bunch of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you know what, though? Like, I've never had anybody in in, gosh, probably 17, 18 years of actively selling real estate. I never had anybody say, you know what, Jason? We're not going to list our house with you because, you know, what, buddy, you followed up too damn much. You kept us too damn informed. You, you gave us too much information. I never had anybody say that. It was always the opposite. It was always like, oh, well, I never heard from you again. Or, oh, I lost your phone number because you didn't call. Or, oh, um, yeah, I really liked Agent, you know, Tom Smith, but we, ne we never heard back from him again. Yeah. yeah, that was always the story. There was never a, there was never a, um. I learned that pretty, pretty quickly. I'd have these great phone calls with people. And then I go, well, they told me to call them back in two weeks, but I called them back in two weeks and they'd already listed with somebody else. And the reason they did, this is what I found out. The reason they did was it wasn't anything really to do with Jason Morris, right? They had a great conversation with me. They, they were interested in what I had to tell them. Dude, it was my fault. I failed to provide them. I failed to provide proper service and help them. And what you're doing is you're following up with a helping heart. You're not sending a text every day that says, hey, Stephen Hughes here, want to list today? Yeah, I mean, it's it's all stuff that is um, really relevant. I mean, I even have like the Dave Ramsey article in here like, hey, this is what Dave Ramsey says about it. Or it's all kinds of stuff. I I'm looking through it. I pretty much follow up every day. Do you know what? For the first I, like, days. I like that too, man, that you're using a third party authority to yeah. assist with your marketing and your assist with your follow up. You're not just saying, hey, my name's Steven Hughes and I say do blank. You're actually going out there finding a third party authority that everybody knows, everybody on some level trusts Dave Ramsey, especially these people, these people, right? Um, and especially you're in uh you're in Salt Lake City. I don't know how big Dave Ramsey is, but you know, I'm here in the Bible Belt. You know, uh, man, Dave Ramsey's classes are taught at church. They're taught, I mean, man, they're taught everywhere. Dave Ramsey's everywhere in the Southeast. And I'm sure he's like that all over the country. You see his books, his name, you see his YouTube videos, and you're using that guy to help you get listings. And 
best part is Dave Ramsey's not charging you anything to email his article out. Oh, no. And, and it's funny you mentioned Ramsey. I don't want to get too off topic here, but um, I have a lot of his stuff I'm incorporating into my general buyer CRM, which I'm right. initially it was going to be just low income people. But the more I did, he's got a whole buyer's guide, a whole seller's guide, a whole guide on taxes. And I'm like, I need to send this to every buyer because so many buyers do not understand basic things financially. I mean, it, it's, it's, and it's not just like the bankruptcy or mobile home stuff, which I, I have a lot of. It's, it's just generally people don't understand. No, you, you, a majority of time, are going to have to put down at least three and a half percent or up to 10 percent on a house. Oh, yeah. You know, you know what, man? And one of the things I like about him, some of his advice, I mean, I'm in a little different situation than a lot of people out there where, you know, some of Dave Ramsey's advice I don't agree with for me. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but for the general public out there, that average person working nine to five, you know, they like, you know, home ownership is a dream, which is most of the country. Right. It's most of our buyers. It's most of our sellers. Dave Ramsey, what he preaches is, is a, is the dream of home ownership and the dream of financial freedom and all that stuff. Um, do you, I mean, it's, it's great advice he's given these people, you know, and it's, um, it's great advice for them in their situation. You know, if they're struggling to pay their light bill, they don't need to go to Starbucks every day, you know? Um, oh, yeah. And if they're struggling with trying to figure out a home or trying to figure out their living situation, um, it's, it's, I mean, it's great advice, you know, and it's, um, a lot of people don't understand this, man. Once you take, if you're, if you're following the, the rent system and the, the highs and lows of rent, right, you really don't know what your rent's going to be one year from one year to the next. You're at the mercy of your landlord. You're at the mercy of the market, which is going to go up and down probably with your income. But if you buy a house, um, a lot of people don't realize this. You can get a 30-year mortgage, and you can pay on that 30-year mortgage the same as if it's a 15-year mortgage, right? You just got to be disciplined to do it, And which he talks about 15-year mortgages and stuff a lot. But, um, but dude, you know, it's, um, I mean, it's just great advice for people out there that are, working regular jobs that are not 1099 employed, a lot of people don't realize that having a real estate license is truly your golden ticket. You just need to go out there and, and dig up the gold, right? Dude, I think that's great, man. I think that's a great idea. Even if you're not using Dave Ramsey, to incorporate another third party. Maybe it's Bigger Pockets. Maybe it's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Maybe it's, you know, who knows? There's people out there that I've probably never heard of that are giving great financial advice. Dude, I think that's a great idea, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really um, cool. It's like uh, I have an article from years ago, and it's an old copy. You've probably seen it of like how the owner of Fisbo.com hired a real estate agent to sell his house. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that, man. I think that's a great article to send out there to people. A lot of people don't understand flat fee companies, too. You know, I remember when they first started coming out, agents thought it was the end of the industry. You know, people could get their house on MLS for 500 bucks. The problem was, the problem was, and it still is, is that $500 just gets your house on MLS. It doesn't help you negotiate with buyers. It doesn't help you with figuring out showings. It doesn't help you with any sort of vetting process with a buyer. You know, yeah. my favorite thing with for sale owners. Yep. Is people, people would go, oh, well, I've got a buyer coming, especially my market for a sec, a lot of second homes, a lot of retirees. They'd go, well, I got a buyer. They're coming in the um, second week in May and they're going to buy my house. Well, number one, the only thing they've seen about your house is some shitty pictures you took with your cell phone, right? They've seen mm -hmm. some basic limited information. And truly when that buyer, if that buyer is serious and he is coming to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to buy a house the second week in May, yeah, he's probably going to stop by your house and look at your for sale by owner because he thinks he's going to get a deal on it, okay? He thinks he might negotiate with you a little bit better than MLS, but he's also probably going to look at MLS and shop around and see all the homes on the market, not just your for sale by owner, you know? And so I see a lot of people, they'll wait that two or three weeks waiting for that imaginary buyer that's going to pay full price 
And, you know, when you start asking that for sale owner questions like, well, hey, man, is that person pre-qualified? They say, yeah, they got the money. Well, dude, you know what? There's been a lot of times I've said I've got the money and I did not have the money. You know what I mean? <laughs> I had to go out and figure out the money if you signed a contract with me. Um, and that's what a lot of people don't have that ability to do that, you know, to find the money. And a lot of these people don't have the ability to um, to actually perform if they're if they did get something under contract, especially with changing mortgage rates. And Stephen, you know, something else, I don't know if you thought about this with your CRM is, is having more text, more emails, maybe adding a couple of phone calls just to provide that sense of urgency. You know what I mean? Because dude, right now I was talking to a friend of mine, me and this guy were building some houses back in 2008, 2009. Great guy, extremely smart. We were building a three bedroom, two bath house for $85,000 in 2008. Yeah. Um, I mean, nice looking little house, right? Great starter home sort of thing. And we were selling these things for like between 119 and 129. Dude, we were paying five grand for lots, right? I mean, the market was, was shitty. He was telling me yesterday, the same house was costing him almost, um, almost $180,000 to build now. He was putting on a lot that was costing him $30,000 to build, had to, to buy, make sure it was developed and ready for a house. And he goes, man, he said, you know what? He said, six months ago, I was selling that house for two seventy nine. dollars He goes, today with mortgage rates and everything, he goes, I'm not getting showings at two thirty nine, dollars right? So yep. that, bot, that seller that's out there doesn't have the luxury right now of waiting 30 days for a buyer. If they wait 30 days and they thought they were going to get 250 for their house um, on day one, day 30, dude, it's probably going to be like 235, depending on rates. And then with some of these funky Fannie Mae rules and stuff coming out where they're actually penalizing high credit, high credit score borrowers, dude, it's worse than that, you know? Oh, I mean, that, um, that whole thing, man. Oh, that's just going to make people mad. Dude, it is going to bring down the price of houses. So, man, we that follow-up system where you're following up every day, I don't think that's – dude, you're following up every day, and I'll tell you this, man, you're doing the best thing for these people. And you guys listen to that. We have to build this mindset that we're – a lot of agents think because they called them yesterday, they shouldn't call them again today or tomorrow or email or text or whatever. They think they shouldn't do that because they're bothering them. Well. Dude, you're not bothering them. You're trying to help them do the best thing for them. And if they feel like you're bothering them, well, maybe, you know what? Maybe they don't really want to sell their house. You know, one of my, one of my favorite closing scripts in the past, Stephen, was, um, was I would just, after so many follow-ups with people, I would tell them, hey, Stephen, look here. Do you, you know why I keep calling you? And they say, well, well, no. Or they'll say some answer. And I say, well, the reason I keep following you is because you've got a house that you want to sell, correct? You do want to sell your house, correct? They said, well, yeah, I do. I said, well, I'm following, I'm following up with you because I know that I can sell your house. And, you know, people will look at that and they just go, oh, well, okay. I know that I can sell your house and I know I can sell your house and get, get you the highest and best price that the market will bring right now. And sometimes you just have to tell these sellers that because, dude, you know what, man? Sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they don't know what's actually happening. Dude, they're not following every mortgage article like we are. So, um, man, I think that's a great, I think it's a great job you're doing. Like a fantastic job you're doing. So yeah. let me uh, recap this real quick. So you set up this campaign. Then every morning you get up, you spend about five to 10 minutes, you send out some emails, um, send out some emails, just a quick little form email. Hey, you want to sell your house? Just something real simple. They respond to it. Next morning, you spend another 10 minutes e inputting those people in your CRM, <clears throat> another 10 minutes emailing the people out. So you've got how many hours a week would you say that you have in this? Like this system. An hour and a half, how much? Two, like one to two, two hours. hours a week. So you yeah, got 
let's just say eight hours a month in this four cell ball in our automated system. And how many listings a month would you say that's bringing you right now? Oh, I mean, for, for that, um, you know, I, I, it's only like probably one every month or two, honestly, because I, I throw it in with the mobiles as well. It's like one every month or two. Um, because I, I think I mentioned earlier, I did take a break from it because I was so yeah. focused on um, building up a couple so, of inches that I have. But I, I kept seeing FISBOs. And the thing is, I don't think FISBOs and expireds are a niche. I think they are a core lead source that all real estate agents should use. So you're getting, so that one listing, just say every two months, what's the average price of that, would you say? Or what's the average price in your market? Uh, like almost 400000 so at 3%, that's $12,000. Correct. Gross commission. Correct. Okay, so you got 16 hours and two months in listing one $400,000 listing that's going to that's gonna bring you $12,000 gross commission. Let's just say you throw in a couple hours for the listing appointment, a couple hours to get on MLS, take pictures, all that stuff. So you got 20 hours in this thing, and it's going on MLS. Right now, the market is still not bad. So more than likely that's selling. Let's just say it sells for less just because math is hard for me this morning, it seems like. Dude, so that is still 20 hours to make $10,000 off a listing. You're making $500 an hour off of this. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's crazy, man. You know what, dude, the community I live in, we got a lot of doctors, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm very sure these doctors with these specialized degrees uh, will talk about investment stuff and we'll talk about different things they have going on. I guarantee you none of them are making $500 an hour. Um, I got an attorney I like, you know what he charges me? He charges me $250 an hour, right? Um, dude, where can you make money like that? Oh, you can't. I mean, I have a buddy who's a dentist and I make more than he does. And he's got like, 200 grand of debt and i'm just like oh, it's yeah. dude uh, and all these guys that live around me and stuff for some reason the community i live in with the new houses being built is attracting a lot of doctors for some reason and you know what i talk to them all of them have three four hundred thousand dollars in student loans all of them honestly all of them have these jobs where they work extraordinary crazy hours and dude when you break it down between student loans and everything else what they net every month dude they're not I mean, they're not netting nowhere near that. Do they? I'm sure that a lot of them wish that they had this on top of, on top of what they were making, or they'd have just got a, a real estate license instead. You know, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. So, so um, and you know, this system that you got going on right now. I mean, I'm not, no, nothing bad about you or anything like this, but, you know, if you said, hey, you know what? I don't want to automate it as much. You know, every two weeks, I'm going to load these things into my dialer. I'm going to make a personalized phone call for that person. Um, or maybe, every, you know, once a month, making that making calls out to all of them. Dude, you could get that system up pretty quick to do it, getting one listing month, don't, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. And I mean, you know, before I even had the CRM, I mean, I just called and texted and I had a word doc I just copy and pasted things over into the text messages um you know I mean the thing the thing about fizzbos is and, and I think this is something agents are going to start struggling more and more with is you this is a free way to get business so you don't have to sit here and buy the dialer you don't have to have the CRM pull up Craigslist yep. pull up Facebook marketplace and just text and call them it is of course hard. man it is harder, but it is free. Like, there's just no reason that you can't prospect when you oh, of course. new agents. You know what, man? And there's so many tools out there. Even if you don't want to, like, sit there and go through the website, Red Egg offers a for sale by owner program. And if you if you tell them I sent you the wave, the startup and everything. Um, so even if you don't want to go through the website, you could literally take and set up your CRM and Red X so that it automatically imported those into your CRM where really you wouldn't even really have to have to do that, you know, for 40 bucks a month. But at the same time, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, Steven, or anybody listening to it. There's still not, you know, that save you a couple of steps, but there's still not a, 
it's still not easy. I want everybody to understand that everything that you, oh. if you're going to make $500 an hour, um, you're going to have to work some when you say, Oh, well, I mean, it, it's funny with um, Fizbo's or the lead source. I literally hit it every day, even on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, same with expires, although I do expires very differently. Maybe that'll be another call, but I, those are two lead sources you have to hit every day. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. I yeah. agree with you 100%. And uh, it, it kind of sucks on Sundays. I'm not a big fan of doing it on Sunday, but, but I do. Otherwise, um, you'll lose it. Yeah, of course. You know what? And I bet I'd be willing to bet there's like zero competition right now, is is it there? Um, it seems that way. It seems like no one's calling them. It's just not like it was in 2021. And they're they're not as mean as they were. <laughs> yeah. But I will tell you this, they are a bit more patient because now everyone has figured out the market is slow. So they're like, well, I know it's going to take a while to sell, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, okay, that's fine. You know, sit on as long as you want. It's yeah. You, do you, you know, I, I mean, it's just like, that's always an objection where I'm just like, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to sit here and wait for the value to decrease, I think that makes, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can do that. And then they're like, what do you mean the value is going to decrease? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I mean, just look at the macroeconomics. I said, have you been to the grocery store lately? And then they're like, oh, oh. Because a lot of people don't understand economics and money. Oh, yeah. They don't understand how these interest rates are, they are affecting prices. Because just like the guy I was friends with, you know, was selling the house for, for $279, and now he's not getting showings at $239. A lot of that is because that buyer that bought at $279 at 3%, you know, can't really afford two thirty nine at seven and a half. Yeah, and we're going to see a point, man. I promise you guys, listen to this. We're going to see a point where the market stops. And um, as we keep going, I mean, we're on a downward slide. I mean, it's not as fast as I thought it was going to be, but we're on a downward slide. And as this downward slide continues we're going to see for sale by owners getting a lot more friendly. And like you said, 2021, they were, they're almost like you call them and say, Hey, this is Jason Morris with XYZ Realty. And they'd literally go, Oh, screw you, Jason. And um, screw you, Jason. You're a real estate agent. We don't need you. Got four showings this morning. Got four calls this morning. Got multiple offers on Saturday. We're just not going to accept them. We're going to go up 10 grand on the price and start over next weekend. You know, that's almost how it was. Yep. And um, it was. And um, now, you know, now that don't exist anymore. They're probably getting a lot of calls too. Um, that are asking about, oh, well, would you be willing to do rent to own? Would you be willing to own or finance? Would you be willing to, you know, let me give you ten dollars today, move in, and I'll pay you in three weeks when whatever happens. You know. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. you know, some kind of backwards deal. And indeed, we're going to see more of that. And a lot of this is going to be marginal buyers that read some no money down stuff on the internet. And indeed, these for sale by owners, man, need you. And they need, they need us. Um, I keep seeing this stuff about, you know, real estate agents, not, you know, basically not being existed, but that's not going to be, that's not going to be true. We're going to, there's going to be a higher need for more informed, more professional real estate agents as we go through the next couple of years? Well, I, I'm going to say this. I know the fear of technology replacing us is over because it has been proven with some of the big companies. They couldn't do it. And oh, yeah. Do it. And just look at the tech industry. That was the first industry in this economic downturn that started collapsing. Um, I have to be careful what I say because – you know, I don't want to be political, but there have been certain things that happened in California with social media companies that prove that all this stuff is phony baloney money. Oh, yeah, dude. It was all fake. It was all fake. You know what, man? I remember when Redfin come out around 2007, 2008. You know, I thought it was the greatest thing ever. You know what I mean? I was like, man, Redfin is the new wave. I thought this, right? Um, yeah. But at the same time, you know, man, I remember in 2004, 2005, the hottest technology on the market was the damn talking house, right? 
looking back, it was just stupid. But I remember selling that shit hard, dude. I, I was a brand new agent, went to one of these real estate things, seeing the talking house. People could, and for you guys that don't know what that is, you could pull up in somebody's yard, tune your radio to an AM station, and it would give you a detailed description of the house you're sitting in front of. And man, I thought, I mean, this was the technology that was going to put us all out of business, you know? Um, and I remember using it, buying, I had four or five of these things, right? And I mean, as we know now, I mean, dude, they're probably antique collector's items as far as real estate, the real estate uh, historical stuff goes, but dude, nothing happened then. Nothing happened. Honestly, Redfin, I think that they're having some issues. Um most of the tech companies are having issues. It's very, it's very interesting what's happening in the world. And I think that this all goes back to, you know, that, that talk that Seth Godin gave, gosh, that's been several years ago about building trust. Um, you know, that, that person that say my mom's age, my mom's in her sixties. Uh, she just hit the age where she could draw social security. Dude, my mom is, my mom can text me. She's on Facebook. She's on all this stuff, but dude, she still doesn't really trust. She still doesn't really trust a lot of technology. Um, my dad, my dad's a contractor. He's operated on a higher level. Dude, my dad still sends faxes sometimes, right? He literally has a fax machine at his house, right? And a lot of that older generation that are going to be selling, are going to be downsizing that haven't done it. Like, like them, the early 60s. Um, dude, they don't trust the technology. My dad will not, my dad would not go through Redfin. My dad would go through a real estate agent that he trusts in the local area. That's where all the money is, is with people who are 60 and older. They don't trust it, dude. And, and I'll get, and I'll, I've been saying this and people think I'm crazy. There are people in their 20s. Like, see, there's almost been a real weird reverse. They don't even understand how to do electronic signatures through email. Oh, I believe it. I so believe it's it. like, if you can't sign something over email, how do we expect them to do everything just like virtually? They can't do it. People don't read. And honestly, it, for things to be automated, they have to read everything or sit and watch a video and tell them how to do every single step. And people's attention spans are not that big. You have to have a real person to basically do a lot of it for them or say, okay, now we'll do this. Okay, now we do this. Like hand holding is a big deal. And everyone oh, yeah. thinks, oh, you're just looking down on people. No, I, I, I'm not looking down at anyone. People legitimately need the help because they're so overwhelmed. There's so many emotions. See, they want to make it to where people are robots and people are not robots. People have complex emotions and they need other humans to help them. Yep. I agree with you hundred percent, man. I mean, even myself, I'm 42 years old, dude. I remember getting the internet at my house when I was 15 years old. I mean, I remember, uh, AOL online and all that stuff and prodigy and getting the disc in the mail where you got 10 hours for free. And I mean, literally I grew up with the internet, right? Right. And even with that being said, I don't 100% trust things I see on the internet. Um, especially right now, there's a lot of scams, um, a lot of scams on marketplace, a lot of scams on Craigslist, a lot of scams on all the other classified sites. And dude, that is becoming so prevalent like prevalent in our society is that people are using that this technology to scam people that dude is just the trust level I feel like is actually going down on some technology and then all the data breaches and all that stuff on top of it man um people are looking for that agent that they can trust and yeah. we're not going to be replaced by technology I mean um dude people thought that uh what was it rocket lawyer or something like that was going to replace attorneys dude and uh, like uh, like i said a minute ago i'm still paying 250 dollars an hour for an attorney you know um that 15 dollar form on uh, legal zoom or whatever it is um dude it just doesn't fit my needs or i you know sometimes i'll look at it and go you know i feel like there needs to be something in here and i might take that form and send it over to my attorney and still pay him 250 dollars to review it and you know, sometimes they might say, hey, this is good. And sometimes they might have three lines where I'm going, damn, why didn't I think to add that? You know what I mean? Oh, so, well, um, there's always something. Every every transaction in real estate has something unique in it or that can be unique. And really, you need someone with experience. There's 
the AI is not that smart. I mean, everyone thinks like, oh, AI is just this genius thing. It's it's just not. They they have it's not. They have not figured it out. This is a so, it's so much hype. It, they haven't figured it out. Fine, it can pop out an essay for your college exam. Well, how does that really help you in the real world? Let's be let's be honest. Yeah, it doesn't. You know. It doesn't help at all, man. Well, man, I appreciate you doing this call with me. Um, you know, as we're wrapping up here, is there anything you want to, any advice you want to give agents on getting for sale by owners or anything like that before we, before we turn the recording off? Um, you know, my, my big advice is just, just do it. I mean, that sounds silly, but you're, you're going to probably talk to a hundred of them and maybe you get one listing out of it. Maybe. I mean, it, even with like, say my CRM and stuff, um, there's so much competition. And the thing is people's attitudes sway with the wind and you just yes. never know. You just never know. So you, you're going to have to talk to hundreds of people to make money. And that's just the way it is. And you're just going to have to not be, don't, don't get emotionally tied into like, oh, well, he hired another agent. If you literally did everything you were supposed to do, well, that's on them, not you. You didn't do anything wrong. You did your job and your job is to prospect and follow up. Of course. You know what? A lot of agents focus on the no's. They need to focus on the yeses, right? Focus on the process. The process will work. You just have to continue working the process. You know what I mean? Right. Just steady, steady adding leads, steady adding leads to your funnel, steady making contacts with those leads, steady going on listing appointments, dude. They, it is going to live. It is going to result in listings and it's going to result in closings and paychecks, you know, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of agents, you know, don't get it that once they quit that, that whole for sale owner system that you got, once you quit putting those leads in, once you quit following up the ones that are raising their hand for you, dude, the funnel stops, you know? Yeah. And a lot of agents don't get that, man. Well, Hey, I appreciate you doing this call with me and um, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. And, uh, Stephen, um, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, what, what do they do? They go to my YouTube channel, Stephen Hughes Hardship Real Estate Pro. That's where they go. Cool, man. Well, hey, thank you so much. Yep. Here, and I'm